Green. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this hearing of the City Council Committee on For Hire Vehicle. I am Ruben Diaz Senior, the chair of the committee. Before we proceed, I would like to recognize my colleagues who are here with, with us today. I have Council Member who? Give me the key. Council Member Rose. And today we will be conducting an oversight hearing on accessibility in the taxi for hired vehicle sector. While there is a vast room for improvement, in recent years, TRC has made great strides in increasing access accessibility and continues to do so. In 2004, there were only five fully accessible taxis out of a, of, of a fleet of more than 12,000. And by 2011, <clears throat> this number was only 231, a rate of just 1.8%. Because of TLC various requirements and incentives sent them According to the most recent data, there are just shy, there are just shy of 2,000 wheelchair accessible taxis operating in the city. While this improvement is to be commended, let's remember that London has required all of their taxis to be wheelchair accessible since 1989. New York City still has a long, long way to go. <clears throat> the for hire vehicle sector is, a, is further behind, but with very recent development in the city, is making progress. The latest data shows that while there, where there are over 100,000 for hire vehicles on the road, barely over 100 are wheelchair accessible. TLC 2017 wheelchair accessible vehicle rules require that for hire vehicle base to dispatch 25% of their trips in wheelchair accessible vehicle by 2022. And more recent rules allow bases to opt into an accessible dispatch program to meet certain response time benchmark for accessible trips. These are important steps toward ensuring that for hire vehicles are available to all New Yorkers. And we will be keeping close eyes on their progress. Today we will be Today we will be an opportunity. Today will be an, opportuni an opportunity for all of us to learn from the administration, the disability community, the drivers and industry groups about the way in which accessibility has been improved. The way this city has fallen short, and the way we can do better. Before we begin with testimony from the administration, I would like to take a moment to remember Elizabeth Ramos, a tireless advocate on behalf of the disability community who fought to ensure equal access to taxis and for hire vehicle for wheelchair users. Please join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. I would now like to welcome the representative of the administration who are here 
with us today. Thank you for being here. And before I, who's going to represent? Who's going to represent? I'm also, uh, also council member Baron is here today. Who's, who's representing the commission? Uh, the name of the commission. Right. 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 Commissioner, the, the taxi will not be here today. She sent her deputy Jennifer Tri Tavis. Um, I want to be. I want to make sure that even though the commission is here today, this is one of the most important hearings we're going to we we'll be dealing today with uh, accessibility for people with handicap. And it will, it, will, it will also be nice to have the commission, but she's not here today. The show must go on, and we will go. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Tavis, take your place, please. And uh, Michael Anderson, representing the commissioner. And I hope that you have the question to could be, you could, you are prepared to respond to all the questions that we have today. That we, are, that we have today. Will you take the oath of office? Good morning. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, before in your testimony before the committee today? I do. Thank you. Yourself as well. Uh, I'm sorry. I do. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner. Uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner Tavis. Thank you. So. Good morning, Chair Diaz and the members of the Four Hire Vehicle Committee. My name is Jennifer Tavis, Deputy Commissioner of Finance and Administration at the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Thank you for inviting me to discuss the agency's progress in making New York City's for hire transportation accessible to all New Yorkers. TLC's mission is to ensure that all New Yorkers receive safe, reliable, and accessible for hire service. Over the past several years, the TLC has taken great strides in making service more accessible for people with disabilities. Today, nearly 3,000 out of the 125,000 vehicles regulated by the TLC are accessible to the approximately 90,000 wheelchair users who work and reside in this city. This represents significant progress in providing wheelchair users a basic service available to all New Yorkers, the ability to secure on-demand transportation from a curbside at any hour of the day or night. Accessible transportation means that New Yorkers and visitors to New York City who have disabilities can participate in the life of the city, including access to health, education, culture, and family. In 2014, the TLC changed the landscape of yellow taxi service for people with disabilities by requiring a percentage of the, each fleet to be wheelchair accessible. Today, almost 2,500 yellow taxis are wheelchair accessible and available for customers, a tenfold increase since 2014. And a percentage of green taxis that started to hit the streets in 2013 are also required to be accessible. And although the number in service is lower than we would like, there are approximately 200 accessible green taxis on the road in the boroughs when five years ago there were none. To get more accessible yellow and green taxis on the road, the TLC created the Taxi Improvement Fund, TIF, and the Street Hail Livery Improvement Fund, SHLIF. The programs are funded through a 30 cent surcharge on all medallion and street hail livery trips. Enrolled owners are eligible to receive a one-time payment of $14,000 to offset purchase costs and up to an additional $4,000 a year for four years to support owning and using a WAVE vehicle, up to $30,000 total over a four-year period. TLC recently increased the per-trip payment 
for drivers taking part in the TIF and Schliff programs. Uh, they now receive, uh, it, they, it was increased from 50 cents to $1 per trip, meaning enrolled drivers will receive $1 for every trip made in a wheelchair accessible yellow taxi, earning an additional average biweekly payout of $134. Since 2016, the program has paid out nearly 37 million to vehicle owners and 7.5 million to drivers. Owners of accessible green taxis are eligible to receive similar levels of support through TLC's Green Grant Program. Okay. TLC also operates accessible dispatch program that provides passengers a safe, reliable ride in wheelchair accessible yellow and green cabs, all at the metered rate. The program is the first operation of its kind, offering citywide wheelchair accessible taxi service. Passengers can book trips on demand via mobile app, text, web booking, and traditional call-in requests, and can pay for their trips via cash or credit card. The accessible dispatch program originally served only Manhattan, but in January of this year, it was expanded to all five boroughs. The program has completed more than 60,000 trips so far this calendar year, and median wait times for accessible dispatch trips fell to 13 minutes citywide. And the program fulfilled 84% of requested trips. We work every day to make these numbers even better. To improve income opportunities for drivers through accessible dispatch, TLC has passed rules to equalize driver payments throughout the city. Uh, thus, there will be an increase in the rates for outer borough-based trips so that they match the trips that start in Manhattan. Additionally, because drivers have to spend time driving without a passenger to pick up accessible dispatch trips, also known as deadheading, TLC will implement an across-the-board $5 increase to these deadhead payments to drivers. With these increases in place, and before the meter even starts, drivers will be able to make up to $35 per accessible trip, while providing much-needed service to New Yorkers with disabilities. Since 2014, the TLC has spearheaded a collaboration with the Metropolitan Transit Authority's Accessoride program to expand opportunities for yellow and green taxis. As a result of this partnership and after a testing phase, the MTA launched a taxi pilot which provides Accessoride service in mainstream vehicles so disabled passengers can travel using the same methods as other New Yorkers instead of a separate service. This partnership also provides additional income streams to taxi drivers and additional vehicle capacity for the Accessoride program. As one green taxi driver put it at a most recent uh, public hearing, we are doing 80% of curb rides for Accessoride passengers and accessibility rides, and this has really incremented our income. I have drivers who in five hours will make $200 and they're happy. They're working all day with Accessoride. As of May 2018, green and yellow taxis provided more than 5,000 Accessoride trips each day, and the share has been steadily growing. Also, by using taxis and taxi apps for the first time, Accessoride passengers can request true on-demand service, which is life-changing for passengers, rather than the old way, booking 24 hours in advance and waiting up to three hours for a ride. We are excited by the possibilities offered by this partnership for passengers, owners, and drivers. We appreciate the interest that we have received from council members about deepening our collaboration with the MTA, and we welcome your support. While there has been great progress in growing the fleet of accessible taxis from 2014 to 2018, the for hire vehicle market uh, grew by over 50,000 vehicles, but woefully few of these new cars were accessible. So starting in 2016, the TLC took the initiative to change that unacceptable situation. Just 10 days ago, the TLC approved new rules, and New York has become the first city in the nation 
to mandate that for hire vehicles provide real accessible service by increasing the number of wheelchair accessible vehicles in circulation. TLC now requires every base to either have an escalating percentage of its trips done in wheelchair accessible vehicles or to respond to requests for accessible vehicles within a prescribed wait time. For example, within the next year, most passengers requesting a wheelchair accessible vehicle must get it in less than 15 minutes and by the third year in less than 10. Mobility is the lifeline of our city. So increasing the number of wheelchair accessible vehicles in circulation benefits all New Yorkers as more of us can get around and get more involved in the economic and cultural life of our city. As you can see, TLC has made meaningful progress in the last five years and there is still much to do. We recognize that New York City serves as a model for other major cities that aspire to make their four higher vehicles <coughs> accessible. And we will keep working to make sure that New York leads the way for the entire nation and the world. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tavis. Tavis? Tavis. Tavis, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner, could you, uh, before that, we have, we have been joined by Council Member Rodriguez. Si alguien necesita interpretación, hay intérpretes. What is that? Equipment? Hay equipo de de para traducir de inglés a español por ahí allá atrás que están. Si alguien necesita interpretación de lo que estamos hablando, lo que están testificando, pues hay unos equipos por ahí para que puedan hacer uso de ellos. Okay, okay. Commissioner, can you can you please tell me as of today how many accessible yellow, yellow taxis are there in the road? On the road? Thank you for that question. We're very happy to be here today to speak about the uh, progress that our agency has made in increasing accessibility over time. Uh, as of right now, there are 2,467 uh, wheelchair accessible uh, yellow cabs, uh, and uh, we are aware of 1,938 that are currently on the road and actively serving passengers. You you have collected one hundred nine million dollars from the public from, from to help owners of car of, of vehicle fix their car to be accessible. Out of the $109 million, how much, how, how much are you have distributed or used already? Uh, so uh, 
To date, we have paid out, um, let me just make sure I use consistent figures. It is, we have paid 37 million to vehicle owners and 7.5 million to drivers. How, how many again? How? 37 million to vehicle owners and 7.5 million to drivers. So you have about 70,000 left? Seven, about 70,000 million? We have, uh, yeah, we've paid out, yeah, that's about, that's about right. We think we have 70 or 80 mil million left, yeah. Is that, is that because people are not requesting the money or, or because, or because the, the, the agency is low in, in helping people? Which one of the two? It, uh, I think there's been a slower demand than we were anticipating, uh, that is the case, but uh, we are working to ensure that everyone uh, has access to the uh, fu funding that they need, uh, that the drivers are receiving the funds that they need in order to offset the costs of modifying a vehicle to make it wheelchair accessible and that the drivers are receiving incentives. And we actually recently increased the payout for drivers. It used to be a dollar per, per trip, uh, sorry, it used to be 50 cents per trip and we doubled it to a dollar per trip. And now uh, bi-weekly drivers are receiving on average $134 in payout. So that's about $270 a month, which is, you know, a, a, a very nice addition to their income. I, 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 I don't know if you answered my question or not. My question was, you have $109 million. Mm -hmm. You have only this, you have about $70,000 left. 70,000 million left. So my question was, Why do you have so much money left? Because of the people, the, 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 the drivers are not requesting the money or because the agency is slow in helping the drivers? Which of the two? We are receiving fewer requests than we initially anticipated when the program was started. Um, we are, you know, I think everyone in this room is well aware of the broader economic pressures that the industry is facing, which has resulted, I think, in lower demand overall. Uh, however, we uh, have made every effort to ensure that the dollars that we are paying out are adequate to meet the needs of owners who are trying to modify their cars to make them wheelchair accessible. And we are looking to spend the money faster because we recently increased the amount that we pay to drivers per trip. It went from 50 cents to $1. So we will be spending down that money faster. And by doing so, we'll be providing additional income to the drivers who are providing this service, this critical service. Does, does the TLC have an estimated an estimate as to how many trips, refusal, complaints are made because an individual is in a wheelchair? I do not have those numbers in front of me. We take service refusals very, very seriously. Uh, they are followed up on by our prosecutions team uh, and uh, any uh, cases that uh, result in a finding that they have in fact discriminated uh, do result in uh, action being taken against the driver um, in the form of fines. Do you have a, <clears throat> can you tell me how many accessible green car camps are um, on the road today? You told me before I asked you about the yellow, what about the mm -hmm. green car? So for, for the green cabs, there's a, about 250 on the road today. Um, I think we're all very aware of the pressures that have uh, made uh, the green sector in particular uh, 
struggle, uh, but we are very happy about those 250 that are on the road, and they are providing service throughout uh, the outer boroughs, and they are a, a critical component of our, our accessible dispatch program and of Accessoride. Let me tell you, in, a, in another topic, <laughs> you will record that in April 30, 20, 2018, uh, the commissioner gave testimony, and we signed a bill, we approved a bill in, regarding introduction 838, and this bill was signed into law on August 14, 2018. Today is more than two months later. Question, when are the regulations going to be published and when will there be a hearing on this? Thank you for the question. Uh, we are here today to focus on accessibility. I can assure you that the Taxi and Limousine Commission is working to comply with uh, the legislation's timelines and to develop uh, all of the requirements associated with uh, the, the high volume for higher service bill. So, so. Um, but we're, we're happy to uh, address any questions um, in follow-up conversations. I really want to focus today on the community of people with disabilities and ensuring that we're addressing the critical issues around accessibility. Okay. So, I'm going I'm, I'm to keep on this question. If we, is the yellow cap sector, is the yellow cap sector on track to meet the 50% requirement? The Taxi and Limousine Commission has continued to work hard to ensure that the yellow sector has the support that they need to continue to modify their vehicles and to make 50% of new vehicles be wheelchair accessible. However, the broader goal of hitting 50% by 2020, we're concerned about it, frankly. Uh, given the overall trends we've seen around yellow taxis uh, and the pressures that the industry is facing, we've seen uh, fewer new cars going on the road overall, and consequently, we've seen also fewer wheelchair accessible vehicles, even though we have been enforcing the 50% of new car requirement. And so we look forward to speaking with advocates later this week uh, about how we can move forward in the best possible way to ensure that we continue to make progress towards this goal and to meet the needs of people with disabilities who live in this city. So, so we both agree that the, the people handicapped, they need the services. We both agree that we've been behind, the TRC have been behind on providing the services. What would you, what would you advise me as a chairman of, the, of this committee and the city council to do to help you uh, improve the, the, the method in which you, you are providing the services to the handicapped community? We are continuing to focus on ways that we can incentivize additional wheelchair accessible vehicles to be on the road. We are very concerned to ensure that we live up to the commitments that we have made. Uh, we need to make sure that we are doing it in a way uh, that works in favor of people with disabilities and of the industry, we need their interests to be aligned. And we very much want to engage in a dialogue with the advocates, with this committee, uh, to ensure that we are really looking at a broad range of possible solutions to improve accessibility. We are, we feel that it is critical that the, uh, that, that, that service continue to improve 
that we continue to increase the number of vehicles on the road that can provide this critical service. It's been too long that people with disabilities have not received the same level of service as everyone else. And uh, we really need to address that. And uh, we welcome ideas from this committee, from the disability advocacy community on how we can continue to do that and grow that number. Is anyone there? Okay. Uh, I don't know if one of my colleagues has any question. So I'm going to I'm going to call on Council Member. Uh, Rose. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good morning, Commissioner. Um, I wanted to um, address uh, something that was in your in your statement when you uh, talked about the accessible dispatch program and. Um, you said that the program has fulfilled 84% of its requested trips. Um, could you tell me why it, um, it's only 84%? And, um, and then you say you're working every day to make these numbers better. Yeah. How, are, how are you doing that? What's your plan of action? Sure. Uh, so the 84% fulfillment where uh, we would love it if it was 100%. And uh, we uh, are continuing to work towards that goal. We would really like for every call to be answered in a timely way with accessible transport. Uh, we, there are a variety of reasons why a call, call might not be completed. Sometimes the passenger cancels. Sometimes the driver is unable to complete it. Our accessible dispatch provider uh, is committed to providing a vehicle uh, if, if, if for some reason the first driver that's requested doesn't make it, we, they will uh, dispatch another driver uh, to do the pickup. Uh, and so we are committed to ensuring that the trip is fulfilled. The 84% uh, pickup rate doesn't mean that the passenger wasn't ultimately picked up. Uh, it just means that either the first driver or the uh, passenger may have canceled the trip. But we're working to improve the numbers, and I'm going to let my colleague Michael Anderson here, who does the day-to-day -day work, uh, speak in greater detail to how we are working to improve those numbers. Um, before he answers that, um, are some of um, these missed calls um, due to the fact that um, the driver doesn't wait the required amount of time for the passenger to get to the vehicle? The program does have built into it. Uh, you know, there is a, an established period of time that they are supposed to wait. Uh, if for some reason the driver does not wait that uh, period of time, you know, we would encourage people to uh, call 311 and register a complaint because it's really important to us to be able to ho hold our drivers accountable for providing the service that they're supposed to be providing through this program. Um, we are providing additional compensation in association with this program. They get compensated for the distance that they drive to arrive at the point where they're supposed to do the pickup. And so I think there is, uh, it's an important uh, expectation that they be able to wait and serve uh, the passenger. And have you found that um, that by giving them additional compensation that the outer boroughs are being adequately served? We are working to increase the number of folks who are, uh, the number of trips that we are making in the outer boroughs and to improve service in the outer boroughs. We've seen, to be frank, uh, the majority of our, our volume of trips through accessible dispatch have continued to be in Manhattan. We've seen uh, fewer trips in uh, in the outer boroughs, but we really want to spread the word that this service exists uh, and ensure that we're maximizing the opportunity associated with it. And we've actually recently taken steps to increase what we're paying to drivers to do uh, to do pickups in the outer boroughs, equalizing the amounts with Manhattan and then raising at the uh, payment, uh, those, those deadhead payments for the distance to the pickup point uh, by $5 across the board to increase the incentive for, for these drivers to go out and do the pickups even in outlying areas uh, where they might not normally be circulating. And I haven't forgotten that I want to know how, but um, have you found um, the, the number of accessible vehicles really is inadequate citywide. It's totally inadequate. 
but have you found that, um, do you have any numbers of what the, number, the amount of vehicles, accessible vehicles, are available to the outer boroughs? So theoretically, any of the 3,000 vehicles that are uh, across all of the sectors that are wheelchair accessible can do pickups in the outer boroughs. Um, yellow, green, and for hire vehicles are all able to do outer borough pickups. Do you maintain any type of, um, of data um, in terms of the number of available accessible um, cabs? And, and I'm from Staten Island, so mm -hmm. I guess you know, the outer borough mm -hmm. I'm most concerned about would be Staten Island. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not have the numbers with me today. Uh, we, could, we could certainly follow up and look at the trips uh, that are provided through accessible dispatch from each of the boroughs. Um, we'd be happy to follow up with that information. Please, uh, I'm especially interested in the number in, of, um, of green cars that um, are accessible um, on Staten Island, I, I would like to know the total number of green cars and then the total number of accessible vehicles because I don't, I frankly, I don't see you know, very many of them. Um, so could you answer how you're planning to um, increase the, um, the number of accessible vehicles? So we are taking, uh, we have, we provide incentives for the greens, as, uh, the green taxis as well as the yellow taxis. Um, owners can receive up to $30,000 starting with a $14,000 initial payment uh, to modify their vehicles to make them wheelchair accessible and then it's uh, up to $4,000 a year for, uh, you know, maintenance costs associated with uh, wheelchair accessible vehicles and then for drivers both green and yellow receive one dollar per trip provided in an accessible vehicle regardless of whether the passenger has uh, need of uh, wheelchair accommodation and we just recently uh, put forward rules uh, to hold the for hire vehicle sector accountable for providing accessible transportation. Too long they have ignored their legal requirement to provide accessible transportation. Uh, there are about 250 uh, 400, uh, for hire vehicles on the road today that are wheelchair accessible, and that is less than 1% of the total for hire vehicles on the road. Uh, and that is why we have put in place a new mandate that will be going into effect uh, to uh, require either a certain percentage of trips to be provided in wheelchair accessible vehicles or for the service to be provided within a certain set wait time. So um, you're saying you're trying to incentivize um, drivers of accessible um, vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, are you increasing the numbers of, of licenses that are being given to accessible vehicles, and are there more accessible vehicles being um, produced? Because at one time, that was a concern that there weren't um, an adequate number of accessible vehicles within the price range that made them, you know, um, cost effective. So uh, are we, what are you doing in terms of that? You know, it's very important that we make sure that we are implementing both mandates and incentives in a way that makes this uh, not only feasible but a desirable option for our owners and drivers. Uh, and uh, we uh, have implemented the uh, Taxi Improvement Fund and the Green Grants programs uh, to make it possible to modify vehicles. Uh, and there are a range of vehicles that we uh, allow them to use. Uh, by providing these grants, it offsets the costs. Uh, the vehicles that can be used for this purpose, you know, are standard vehicles that can be purchased like any other. And then they go to a, um, a, a uh, modification uh, business that adds in the ramps and the various accessible um, 
equipment, uh, the securements, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then they come to TLC who inspects and makes sure that everything meets the specs. But I'm, I'm not aware at this juncture of any uh, challenges in terms of the supply of vehicles or the supply of wheelchair accessible equipment. Um, and uh, we've heard from um, the actual consumers that the, the type of vehicle is important in terms of accessibility. So um, it seems to be that most are rear loading, mm -hmm. which seems not to be the safest type of um, loading as opposed to side loading. Can you tell me the number of cars that you have that are rear loading um, and are side loading? And um, if, they're, if you're looking at you know, safety issues in terms of um, how passengers are loaded. We have heard that feedback. Thank you for raising this. Uh, we have heard the feedback uh, from, uh, from the uh, community of people with disabilities that they prefer the side entry to the rear uh, entry. The majority of the vehicles on the road today are uh, rear entry. Um, my understanding is that it's uh, somewhat less expensive to uh, modify vehicles for rear entry than it is for side entry, and that's driven decisions on behalf of a lot of our owners. Uh, we are, we have authorized two vehicles to be able to uh, be modified for side entry, uh, and we are happy to engage with in discussions about how to increase the numbers that are on the road that offer side entry. Um, I do not have the specific numbers of how many are side entry versus rear entry at this moment, but I'm happy to try and follow up with you on that. I would, I would really like to see them, and, um, and if the number of requests to, you know, for modification. Um, and training, how are the drivers trained to assist um, people who need accessible vehicles um, and more so visually impaired or um, deaf uh, passengers. Absolutely. Um, and thank you for uh, bringing up uh, the, there is there's a wide variety of uh, disabilities and we need our vehicles to be accessible for all of them and we need our drivers to be aware of the needs of all of our passengers so that they can provide appropriate assistance. Are the, is there any training specifically that drivers of accessible vehicles um, now um, have to take that's yes. mandatory and it covers a full range of disabilities? Yes, so every driver, regardless of what they're going to drive, uh, all drivers have to go through mandatory training uh, when they are uh, getting licensed by TLC and they have to pass an exam and accessibility needs are covered in that training. And we also offer uh, training and refresher trainings uh, that they can attend. Our uh, accessible dispatch provider provides regular trainings uh, to refresh people on how to use the securements uh, in the different types of vehicles that are on the road today um, and how to provide appropriate service. Uh, and we also do outreach to drivers and provide them with um, educational brochures uh, and try to provide them with all of the support that we can to ensure that they know how to serve people with disabilities and that they provide appropriate assistance. Um, uh, green car drivers are now answering accessoride calls and um, in your, your statement, um, there's about 80% 80, 80 of the curb rides are for accessoride passengers now. Is that an accurate number? Uh, let me look back at this. So, so this is, that was a, a statement from a driver uh, who was saying that uh, he individually had found that uh, Curb was providing a significant number of accessoride uh, trips. Uh, I, I think that the green wheelchair accessible vehicles are very heavy participants in um, 
in the Accessoride program and pilot. Uh, and, uh, you know, this individual driver is clearly relying on it very heavily. Uh, it does not represent what? overall the green taxis Do that are not accessible. Do you have a sense of, of what, you know, the overall usage um, is, the, the relationship between Accessoride um, pickups and green car pickups or taxi and the for hail? Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have the break up, breakdown in front of me of green versus yellow. I know that overall we do about 5,000 rides a day uh, for Accessoride. Um, and in the outer boroughs, those are predominantly uh, done by our accessible green taxis. Is there a move to um, move away from the traditional Accessoride um, transit system uh, to um, accommodate the, the taxi and for hire industry? We are very happy to be providing service to people with disabilities, and we are very happy to be giving trips to our drivers, but I think for broader questions around the future of Accessoride, MTA would be uh, better positioned to respond. We are happy to partner with them on this program um, and feel that this is really a win for all concerned. Um, but they're really the ones who lay out the, pe the who lay out the policies and determine the, the future of, of that program. And I just have one more question. Um, when um, a, a green car, a for hire car, a livery, whatever, um, picks up an accessoride call, um, an accessoride call usually a, a, a passenger pays two dollars and seventy five cents. Who subsidizes the cost for that trip um, beyond the 275? Um, and say a trip to the outer boroughs. Mm -hmm. I've had um, constituents that leave Manhattan Hospital and will go to Staten Island. Who subsidizes the other part of that ride? Uh, the MTA does, and uh, they uh, are able to do it in general at a lower cost than uh, for their usual accessoride service when they're doing it through us. So that's a part of their their budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of of people who have different abilities, New York has to do better in terms of the accessible vehicles that we provide. And we're putting a lot of resources into um, the, the taxi services across the board. And, um, and, and I wanna see that, you know, we have safe vehicles that are easy for um, the consumers to access and make sure that they are available and that the outer boroughs have you know an equal share of these vehicles no one should have to wait for an excessive amount of time to get a ride thank you thank you thank you thank you council member we have been joined by council member rosenthal and council member moya commissioner You know, I have noticed, I have noticed um, the public hearing that I have attended here in city council, that this committee, if one, maybe the most, the most, or if not one of the most attended uh, hearings, every time that we have a hearing, a lot of people, I'm looking at that Row, and I see uh, what I see. I'm not a handicap. I am not. But this morning, to get here, I had to get up early, real early, to get ready to be here. I'm not a handicap but I had to get up early. Now looking at, at that row here, 
Sí. How much sacrifice? What did they do this morning? What time did they get up? What? How many things they went through to be here this morning? And they're here. What do you think they're here for, Commissioner? I think that they are here because this is a critical issue to them. It's a critical issue for us. I think that everybody in New York City deserves reliable, on-demand transportation. And no one should be excluded from that. It shouldn't be the case that they have to get up that people with disabilities have to get up hours and hours uh, before they want to arrive somewhere, uh, that, and that they should have uncertainty around whether they are going to even arrive on time with the wait times. Everyone should be able to rely on transportation in this city. It's critical to their ability to participate in the economic life of this city, to get to a job on time every day. It's critical to their ability to uh, participate in the social life of this city uh, and the cultural life of this city. It should be a, a basic thing that everyone in this city has access to. And uh, we really want to be a part of fixing the problem. Yeah, and, I, and I will also say that if they're here and they made the sacrifice to be here, we all should have been here. Even the commission should have been here. I mean, look at them. I don't think that the sacrifice they made to be here should be ignored. And, and I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward for the day when they don't have to come here. Not even they, the other, the other taxi drivers. We just got another one that got uh, killed himself uh, a few weeks ago. And, and, and this, I'm, I have been trying since I became chairman of this committee, I have been trying to see how we could fix the problems. Problems doesn't go, but they don't go away. People, people, driver keep being harassed, driver keep being arrested for nothing, driver keep being abused, someone's going high, even though we make it easy for the for the taxi this committee under the direction and supervision of of, of our leader Corey, council member speaker Corey Johnson has done everything possible everything possible and I appreciate uh, what uh, speaker Johnson has done everything possible to give the taxi and limousine commission the authority, the power, the means for, for, for the problem to be solved. But I don't see it's like it. taking the time and doing things, and sometimes you get frustrated. But we have to continue. I would like to see, again, I'm looking forward to, to all of you and this committee is working in your behalf, council member speaker is working very, very uh, uh, doing everything possible to help uh, solve the problem that you're facing. I uh, thank you for being here this morning. I hope that soon you don't have to come here. Soon everything will be, and the rest of the drivers too. So. Uh, I am, I think that Council Member Rosenthal has some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair Diaz. This is the first time I've been at one of your committee hearings. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you so much for testifying. I'm aware of this issue from only the perspective of the disabilities community, so forgive me if my questions are naive. But am I right in understanding that we're, that it's a very difficult challenge for the city, that the MTA is legally responsible for getting people with disabilities around? 
The mechanism they use is accessoride, which everyone agrees stinks. And then, um, I hope that wasn't out of turn. Um, sorry. And then, um, but they're doing this pilot project now, right, that they pay for the difference um, in what the cost is between, you know, the full cost of the ride and 275 that someone pays. What do you think the um, chances are, or how do we best advocate for the MTA to expand their pilot program to be comprehensive? And that, what are the obstacles getting in the way of us asking the MTA to fully fund that, which is their, I, get, I think, legal obligation? But I'm, as I say, a little less familiar. I know it's more complicated than this. Thank you, Council Member. We are very happy to be partnering with the MTA, and we think that it is a really wonderful service to be able to provide to people with disabilities. We are very happy to be providing on-demand service uh, through this pilot to the pilot participants. And uh, I know that it would be huge progress if MTA were able to expand this to, uh, to, to be universal instead of just for the uh, thousand or so people who were the participants in the initial pilot. I think they're expanding it somewhat now, but it's, it's still not universal. Um, you know, I, I think the MTA would be best positioned to answer the question about what resources would be required. Uh, we are ready and willing to partner with the MTA in any way that is needed. Uh, we think this is p beneficial for the passengers with disabilities, uh, and we think this is beneficial for our drivers. So it's really a win from our perspective, and we are happy to engage any way we can in, uh, in, in this pilot and be supportive of the MTA and, uh, as they decide the future of that program. That's really great to hear. I appreciate that. Um, I have heard that for the lucky few that are in the pilot program, it provides dignity, respect, uh, and speed at what is the cost that anyone would pay if they were on the MTA, 275. So again, you know, one of the things that I've been um, uh, really trying to drum home to the MTA is they have tremendous cost inefficiencies mm -hmm. in the way that they run their programs, certainly through their procurement mechanisms, which are deeply flawed. And I think Andy Byford is maybe talking about taking some of that on, but what I'm thinking is do you think under their current you know, the current amount of funds they have that they could pay for more people to be part of the pilot. Um, what do you, do you, have you guys done some analysis to understand what the cost to the MTA might be if they were to fulfill their obligation to the disabilities community and they would pay for uh, enrolling everyone, mm -hmm. you know, which is as it should be. Um, we want to partner with the MTA on this program. We're in regular dialogue with them. We talk to them every week. Uh, and uh, I unfortunately am not privy to the MTA's overall budgetary uh, conversation on this. Uh, I, I have heard certainly that cost is a major consideration from them, but they would really have to answer that question about what additional budget might be av available. Uh, but we are continuing to talk about a variety of options uh, that might allow us to uh, broaden the program. And I want to give Michael Anderson, who uh, oversees uh, the team that runs that program day to day, uh, a chance to provide additional detail on uh, what we've been discussing with Accessoride? Sure, so I think it's probably important to 
just lay out our, our relationship with Accessoride. We, this is an Accessoride program and we serve as uh, subject matter experts in, in a consultative um, service. And so we don't really have information about the decision making around how they're gonna expand the pilot to include more people or not. Um, you know, as our commissioner said, we are extremely supportive of it. We have our own set of financial incentives that we use to uh, give owners and drivers of wheelchair accessible taxis a reason to be out on the road and to pick up passengers. And, you know, so we feel like we're doing, uh, we're doing a lot on our side and, and I would have to ask, um, I guess the MTA will have to follow up on theirs. And I want to correct myself. Someone is furiously texting me that uh, the MTA's obligation uh, is for Accessoride, that they're not obligated to provide respect and dignity for, they're not legally obligated to provide the service in a way that's respectful to the person taking Accessoride, but that they are fulfilling their mandate, their legal mandate via Accessoride. I would argue that because the pilot has been so successful and you've demonstrated that and you know just done such a good job working with them that um, I hope, uh, I'm sure the MTA is aware from people that they would like this program to be expanded, continued and expanded. But again, I would just like to reiterate, if there's any way that uh, us as a council can be helpful in getting the MTA over that dignity hurdle that uh, I'm certainly here, I'm sure, you know, we're all supportive of the disabilities community and would be happy to help. Thank you, thank you, Chair Diaz. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, we have been joined by Councilmember Borelli. Uh, I don't know, there, there's no more question from the council member. So, before we dismiss the commissioner, again, I would like to express my apologies to uh, the, the audience and I hope that the day will come when you don't have to come here, you don't have to get up early. I'm calling, I, I believe that there is a mayor, a representative from the mayor's office here. So whoever is representing the mayor, I'm calling on the mayor to call to, uh, to, uh, to get into the TLC to move, because the council, again under the direction or the, the leadership of Cody Johnson, have given the TLC all the tools. We have passed laws. The commissioner was saying that she cannot do because it was supposed to be done by by the council, so we have done, we have passed laws, and we are giving the TLC the authority and the, the tools to move, but obviously TLC is dragging its feet. So the, the mayor has to come, jump in, and be sure that we move and that our TLC. So maybe, who knows, I'm praying, Someday you don't have to come back here that we got all the services that you're supposed to get on time and nice and neat and clean, that the driver doesn't have to be being arrested. They don't have to be killing themselves. That would be a wonderful world. And I'm working and I will do everything possible. And I appreciate again what Speaker Johnson, his support for this committee and all the members of the committee uh, support and work. So, 
saying that I appreciate you coming to the commission. I don't know if you want to address them before you go. But uh, thank you all for being here today. I really look forward to hearing from all of you. Uh, I'm sure that a number of you are planning to give testimony, and I really welcome your input. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here today. And we have no more questions for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to call on to the public, for those of you that came here to testify today, I'm going to call, call you by group of five. So when you hear your name, please come and sit, take a seat in the chair. Voy a, dar, voy a empezar a llamar de público la persona que quieren testificar que se han, se han escrito. Cuando Cuando yo llame su nombre, por favor, tome asiento en la, en la mesa. Lo voy a llamar en grupo de cinco. I'm starting with Peter Mazur. Nicole Epstein. Epstein. Ryan Price. Ryan Price. Joseph Rappaport. And Richard Lipsky. He's already done. You got the four best people in the industry right now. No, Ryan Price. Not Ryan. No, she's with the other group. You, he called you, Joe. One to do. Todo bien. Presente. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the, what is your name again? Okay. Good morning. My name is Valerie Joseph. I am an accessorite advocate for the Brooklyn Center for the Independence of the Disabled. BCID is a member of ARD, the Accessoride Reform Group. We call it ARG because that is what writers often think about the accessoride service. Thank you for the opportunity to testify before the council today. Last month, 60 accessoride users made their voices heard at the MTA Transit Committee meeting. Dozens of us testified in support of the MTA's innovative on-demand pilot, which allows a limited number of accessoride riders to get on-demand service using the curb app or calling in for the MTA to connect us to a ride right away. For the first time, Accessoride users can get a ride without having to reserve a one day in advance. Finally, we can go directly to our destination without going in the wrong direction or picking up three or four other people. For once, we can go where we want, when we want. It is a fantastic program, and we've urged the MTA to expand all accessoride riders to be able to use this service. But if 
Only a handful of for hire vehicles are accessible as the case is now. The MTA will have a tough time deliver delivering adequate service. <coughs> that is why we need the council's leadership in making accessibility the norm for FHV service, not the rare exception. I can't talk enough about what the MTA's new on-demand service has done for my life, but I will keep it brief. It has made a huge difference. I'm a Queens resident who works in Brooklyn, and also I must tell you that I go to meetings throughout the day, and to get accessoride, I would have to call a day in advance for an impromptu meeting. So I love the service, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Joe Rappaport. I'm the executive director of BCID, and. Uh, Along with our work on the ARG campaign that uh, Valerie mentioned, we're also a lead member of the Taxis for All campaign. We really appreciate your having this hearing on this important civil rights issue, and that's what it is. Not just an MTA issue or a TLC issue, it's a citywide question of civil rights. The ability of people to get around as easily as possible, no matter whether they have a disability or not. And that's why we're here today uh, urging that there be more, significantly more accessibility within the, in the for hire vehicle um, industry. When our community last visited City Hall, we joined Mayor de Blasio, council members, including you and taxi driver af activists, as the mayor signed legislation that restricted the number of new FHV licenses, reduced costs for drivers of wheelchair accessible vehicles, and helped beleaguered drivers in other ways. And we thank you for your leadership in winning these advances. But, as always, we're back, because there is much more that the council can do. And we have a few proposals, and other people will talk about other ideas, but here are a few proposals that we think the council can do, not shift responsibility to any other agency. One is make the restrictions on non-accessible FHV vehicle licenses permanent. Uh, right now, the council set a marker with its so-called CAP legislation uh, by allowing new FHV licenses only for drivers who choose to put accessible vehicles on the road. But this res restriction expires in less than a year. So one simple way to increase the number of accessible vehicles on the road is to pass legislation that wouldn't allow any new non-accessible vehicles for the long term. That way, companies like Uber and Lyft would either have to start putting accessible vehicles on the road or drastically reduce uh, the number of vehicles they operate. We, we think they'll choose the former. I have other ideas, and my testimony has them. We want 100% of all vehicles that are used in taxi or FHV service to be accessible. That's the way to really guarantee service for everyone, including in Staten Island and other parts of the city. Um, and we want you to find the resources uh, for funding, and the, the TLC talked about some of those that they're using. It needs to be expanded to make sure that everyone can get a, a ride. Thank you. Thank you. Have you, Mr. Rabapur, have you, have you spoken with Christopher Lee? Oh, once or twice. <laughs> yes, we, we are in touch. And all, um, all those ideas that you have, are you good? Yes, we, 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 we've talked generally about these ideas, and we'll talk uh, further, for sure. Uh, we're, right. We really appreciate his, uh, the access. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan Price. I'm the executive director of the Independent Drivers Guild, the IDG. Um, the Independent Drivers Guild is a machinist union affiliate of app-based drivers. It's Uber, Lyft, Via, Juno, Drivers United for a Fair Industry. Um, I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's way too long. but. Um, what it comes down to is we know that right now there needs to be more wheelchair accessible vehicles on the road. Uh, and the Taxi and Limousine Commission has taken several steps uh, in order to uh, get, more get more accessible vehicles on the road. A lot of them haven't been able to take effect yet, but some measures that they've taken is, like you mentioned, temporarily uh, capping vehicle ownership, which does have its problems. Um, but there is an exemption for if a worker purchases a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, 
you know, the city waived licensure fees for wheelchair accessible vehicles, and something that I'm surprised hasn't been mentioned yet is that the Taxi and Limousine Commission is, uh, you know, it, uh, increasing driver's pay, uh, and workers that are um, operating a wheelchair accessible vehicle are gonna be paid significantly more uh, if they are operating uh, if they're operating that wheelchair accessible vehicle. So because of that, we're getting a lot of interest from our members that are coming into our office and asking how they can get a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, some of them, you know, want to know if they can access the taxi improvement fund. Uh, some of them want to know how they can get a loan. Um, but the fact is right now, they just don't have the access to, ca access to capital that most people do. Uh, because they're 90% immigrants, uh, they have little to no credit. Uh, they can't get a loan at all. Uh, in order to own their own vehicles and in order to own a wheelchair accessible vehicle, which is a problem that we want to fix. Um, and the, the council might want to consider a improvement fund for the uh, for hire vehicle industry so that we can get them the same parity, the same access to resources as, you know, their, their taxi, uh, the taxi workers as well. But um, we're available for questions uh, either offline or now. I'm just loud, okay. I'm with <clears throat> Gotham Government Relations and Nayeta, New Yorkers for Equal Transportation Access. <clears throat> so today we've heard a lot of different ideas um, from the Deputy Commissioner, thank you very much. Um, however, I'd like to actually discuss some real solutions. And this all starts with a quote that Jim Weissman, uh, the CEO of United Spinal Association, stated, I believe, over two years ago. But it, it contains a solution. So, quote, before Uber started luring away tens of thousands of taxi drivers, New York lawmakers pledged to support the disability community by increasing the number of accessible taxis. But Uber's, Uber's rapid expansion has thwarted these efforts, and its refusal to help fund accessibility programs has made the, pro the problem even worse. So there is the problem and the solution. The solution being we need to start to A, impose wheelchair accessibility, accessibility requirements on Uber and the like, or if not, they need to start paying up. Whether I'll actually use Uber's quote of $2 per ride is what they quoted when they got the TLC to step back on their wheelchair accessibility mandate and actually delayed it for another year until June 2019 versus June 2018, making us even further in the hole. So let's use that $2 figure that Uber threw out that yellows are now providing that same exact service and not being compensated for. That is why I will assure you, Deputy Commissioner, that we are not anywhere going to reach that 50% mandate. I think we threw out 1,200 yellows out of what was expected to be 6,500 by 2020. I'm more than concerned. I can tell you right now we're not reaching that mandate. So unless New York City wants you to sit back and figure out what to do, we need to impose a $2 surcharge on every Uber trip. Good morning, Chairman Diaz and members of the committee. My name is Peter Mays, the General Counsel to the Metropolitan Taxi Care Board of Trade. We represent the owners of about 5,700 licensed medallion taxi cabs. Our full service driver center has provided accessible vehicle training for about 2,500 drivers and has assisted more than 1,000 drivers in signing up for taxi improvement fund reimbursements. Like all services the center provides, there is no cost whatsoever to our drivers. The problem of accessibility in the for hire sector is not new. The TLC first attempted to tackle this problem in the year 2000 when it mandated that each for hire base either provide accessible on-demand transportation or contract with another base to do so. 18 years after the passage of that rule, one-third of 1% 1 of the 115,340 licensed livery and black car vehicles are currently accessible to persons with disabilities. More recently, the industry rejected a plan by the TLC to require each base provide a threshold number of trips and replace it with a self-enforcement program that, which is not unlike the failed program of 2000, except that the new plan doesn't even purport to require service equivalency. Just two months ago, this council passed and the mayor signed into law a partial vehicle licensing cap for the high, for hire industry. Since this cap took effect, the largest of the FHV app companies has added 3,539 new for hire vehicles. Of these, 10 are accessible. 
152 of the 80,776 vehicles aff affiliated with Uber-branded black car bases are currently accessible. I will leave it to the committee to decide if this city has done enough to provide accessible service to residents and visitors using livery and for hire services. On the other hand, we have a successful program in the yellow industry and are marching towards 50 percent accessibility. We want to address a couple of ideas that would help that a little bit along the way. We need to find new and creative ways to incentivize drivers. One way we thought about is the MTA tax, which goes into effect on January 1st that will devastate this industry with a $3 trip. Maybe that, maybe we can exempt the four high uh, accessible trips from that mandate. That's not within the purview of the council, but an expression of support might go a long way up to Albany. We have a couple of other ideas that are in our, my testimony that would improve services, maybe li waiving licensing fees for drivers that do a threshold number of, of accessible trips, L expanding vehicle choice, which right now is limited for the most part to the taxi of tomorrow. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And I yes, I would, like to ask you, I, I would like to ask you one question. Sure. <clears throat> you, if, if you have to rate the city, mm -hmm. the TLC, mm -hmm. Um, it's on the program mm -hmm. the, from one to ten. What number would you give? Wh which is the higher? Which is best? Ten is best. Uh, well, well, ten is the higher. Ten is the best. When it comes to uh, enforcement on the taxi cab side, I'd rate it a ten or maybe nine and a half because there's always room for improvement. On the FHV side, Zero. give him a three. <laughs> on a good day. I'm sorry. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, the committee. Uh, my name is Richard Lipsky. I represent uh, medallion owners, and uh, I'm delighted to be here today. I want to thank the commissioner for actually staying uh, and setting a precedent um, that I think uh, Commissioner Joshi should uh, follow through on, because it's always a disappointing um, to have the city testify and then disappear when advocates uh, are here, and I appreciate that. I also want to make mention uh, the, the chairman's uh, question that was not answered about Intro 838 and the slow pace in which the TLC is moving to implement the laws that were passed. Everything here is interrelated. If you don't cap the number of four hire vehicles in the right way. If you don't limit the number of vehicles, you're hurting the industry that is providing the accessible service to the people with disabilities. You have to address that because everything is interconnected. The bogus uh, rules that were put into place are Uber rules for accessibility. What we need is the council to pass the same mandate. Everything the council does should be towards creating regulatory parity between the sectors. If there's a 50% mandate for taxis, there should be a 50% mandate for the Ubers. And, and to the IDG's uh, excellent testimony, there needs to be parity on TIF funds and uh, the payment of 30 cents per ride for all the vehicles, and everyone can participate if they're providing the accessible vehicles. So what we have is a slow walk on the bills that were passed in August, and we need to speed that up, and we need to make sure that all of the FHV vehicles are complying with the same rules that uh, taxis are, are forced to comply with. And anything the council can do to advance that is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lipsky. Thank you, Mr. Lipsky. I would like to, Commissioner, I would like to join Mr. Lipsky in praising you, in, in recognizing the courtesy, the respect that you have shown, in staying, at least for a while, <laughs> and giving the respect to those, the, the people that really need it. Thank you. Maybe we could have you, now from now on, <laughs> we do better business like that. Thank you. I'm going to call another five. Okay, Sergio Cabrera. Sergio Cabrera. Sergio Cabrera. Okay. Pedro González. 
Eh, Jenny, vente aquí para que le transmita, lo pueda traducir. Eh, Edith, Edith, Edith what? Edith, Edith Prentice. Edith Prentice. Okay. John Ryan. John Ryan. Or uh, Jean Ryan. Jean Ryan. Jacob Policano. Jacob Policano. Y Jacob? Okay. We're going to start here today, now, with you. Yes. I'm lucky I got here today. Accessor I didn't show up. I couldn't get a cab. And finally, even though it said there were no cabs available after 45 minutes, I got one. <clears throat> this is so typical. Or Accessor I gets me someplace an hour early or an hour and a half half early. I'm Jean Ryan, I'm president of Disabled in Action of Metropolitan New York. Many of our members have mobility impairments which require the use of an accessible for hire vehicle, but where are the vehicles? They're like an Elvis sighting. <clears throat> for many years, the for hire vehicle industry has been required to provide the equ equivalent comparable service to wheelchair and scooter users but they've not done so, so we have not been able to travel spontaneously and get a ride. The wildly popular Access Ride Curb Program shows that there is a need and a demand. Our pent-up need to get places spontaneously shows that. The only way we can get equivalent service is to make all for-hire vehicles and all taxis wheelchair accessible 100%. Otherwise, we're going to be waiting way longer than everybody else. We don't want a piecemeal solution. Maybe you have to start piecemeal, but you have to have it written in that you're going to 100%. We have, uh, there are tons of uh, for hire vehicles in my neighborhood, but can I get one? Never. <clears throat> for hire vehicles are in the boroughs. We're in the boroughs. Why are the for her vehicles ignoring a market of at least 100,000 wheelchair users and rising? And that's not counting the many visitors. So <clears throat> we really need this. We would use it, and the MTA would probably use it. It's not a matter of money. For years, the industry has been stalling and doing nothing. It's not a matter of anything but prejudice. And it's time to stop being prejudiced against people with disabilities and start making all for hire vehicle rides accessible rides. Some of your future customers are right here in this room. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Edith Prentice, and I am the chair of the Taxis for All campaign. I think it's important to remember how we got into this. I'm sorry, TLC, you do have to bear the responsibility. At the time of basically before 9-11, the date of Halloween that year was to be the expansion of the previous for hire vehicle rule implementation in the for hire industry. After 9-11, nothing happened. It was stepped aside for the industry, which has taken a tremendous hit. That's fine. But you have to come back to it sometime. We're increasing. Our numbers are increasing. Many of us are in New York for all the transportation options, etc., and not to have 
accessible taxis for hire vehicles, etc., is very problematic. Um, I believe it was Mayor Bloomberg who did consider, who stated that taxis are part of the continuum of transportation. He didn't make the jump to and should be accessible, but that's where we are. It's unfortunate that at this time, the four hire, the vehicles and taxis are becoming less accessible. The number of green vehicles that are no longer um, running and the huge increases in the four hire vehicle industry, I, could, I tried to do the math, but it just, it got beyond my, my little four digit calculator. I think it's really important that as Jean said and Joe said and Valerie said, and it's, we, we need parity, we need equity. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the cabs that are out there that are accessible are getting a little tardy, a little not the best for wear. I'm a little tired of having to wait for a driver to have to move the tire and everything out of the back seat, uh, out of our space into the back seat. It's also important to realize that although drivers are trained, many of them get lazy. Um, I had a little wrangle with a driver yesterday about securing my chair. He's gonna be going up the, up the highway. Yeah, I wanna be secured. I really don't care whether your front uh, restraint is working or not, put it on. It's very important to enforce all of these standards. I think we also have to ask, what has the council done? We have been to too many hearings, to too many meetings, to testify endlessly over the life of the Taxis for All campaign. Um, the very first bill, as you well know, was introduced by Margarita Lopez. We went from three, we went to eight, we went to whatever, and we still don't have an equivalent number. I think it's time for the council to step up as well. Um, as I've stated at the signing, we did not have that access that the drivers had in meeting with the council, in working with the council. We have been shut out in many instances. I think it's time that the council realizes its responsibility as well. Thank you. Buenos días, mi nombre es Pedro González, mi testimonio, ¿cómo, cómo? Sí, mi testimonio es que yo les saqué un carro con el dile Quest Libre. Good morning, my name is Pedro González. My testimony is I took, I took out a vehicle from Quest Libre Leasing. Hicimos un contrato de 130 pagos. We made a contract of 130 weeks. Le he hecho 120 pagos. I have made 120 payments. 52,800 dólares le he pagado. 52,800 dollars I have paid. El 9, el 22 de, este, de septiembre del 2018. On Thursday, September the 22nd of this year. Y es el último pago. I made the last payment. El 24 de septiembre. On the septiembre 24th of September. Del 2018. Of this year. En marcha se lleva el carro. Marshall impounded my vehicle. Yo estaba presente cuando el marcha estaba enganchando el carro. I was present when the marshal was lifting my vehicle. Le pregunto que por qué se lleva el carro. I questioned why was my vehicle being towed. Me dice que la compañía debe. I was told that the company owes. 87 mil dólares. 87 thousand dollars. Llamo a la señora Cena. Cena. I, I called. Bello. Cena Bello. Y me dice que eso es mentira, que son ocho mil dólares que ella debe y que pase por el dealer para llevar conmigo. And I was told that that was a lie. It was eight thousand dollars that was owed and to pass by the dealer. 
Voy a decirle a la vía, hablo con ella y me da un vehículo que no estaba alto para trabajar. Yo lo agarré. I went to the dealer. It wasn't a part to be working, but I took it. Para garantizarme hasta que parezca mi vehículo. En As una a guarantee before my vehicle would appear. En una semana, yo voy allá, ella me dice que tengo que pagarle 450 dólares, no a mi cuenta. In one week, I go to the leasing company and she, would, she told me that I had to pay 400 dollars, not towards my account. Con lo que yo le dije a ella que no, que yo quería entonces que quería mi carro y si I no le iba. I wanted my vehicle. Le iba a llevar, le iba a llamar a Canal 47. And if not, I was going to call Channel 47. Por lo que ella se alteró, hasta me manoteó y me sacó del dealer. She got upset with me and she removed me from the leasing company. Pues ahí yo fui a la oficina de reverendo. I went to the office of the reverend. Y le planteé lo que me había sucedido, le llevé los papeles. Explain what had happened, I took the paperwork. La señora Jenny la se llama a, a, a Zina Bello. Miss Jenny calls Zina Bello at the, deal, at the leasing. Ella le dice que no, que no me ha dado, que no me ha entregado el carro porque yo le debo nueve mil dólares de violación de Easy Pass. And was told that she wasn't giving my vehicle to me because I owe $9,000 in Easy Pass. En febrero 8 del 2018, de este February 8 of 2018. Ella me llama y me dice, después que tengo dos años con el carro. After I have two years with the vehicle. Que le suspendieron la tablilla porque no estaba afiliado a una base. Que le llevara el carro. was suspended due to not being affiliated at a base company. Yo voy a la compañía, le llevo el carro. Me renta un carro. I go to the leasing company and then she rents me another vehicle. De febrero 8, abril primero. From February 8th of this year to April of this year. Pagándole 425 dólares semanal. Paying 425 dollars weekly. No a mi cuenta. Not towards my account. Sino, eso es aparte. But that, that was separate. En abril primero. April 1st. Me llama. She oh. calls me. Que, le, que ya el carro mío estaba ready. That the, my oh. vehicle was ready. Cuando voy. El carro, when como, I go, she gives me the vehicle con otra tablilla, with a different plate number. Y me manda a a TLC. She sends me to go have it inspected at TLC. En mayo 18, May 18, me llama la secretaria, secretary calls me, y me dice que yo tengo toda esta de Easy Pass and tells me that I have all these violations from Easy Pass del año pasado. From last year of 2007. Le digo, pero joven, tengo un mes y 18 días con esa tablilla que usted me, me acaban de poner. I explained to her that I have one month and 18 days en, towards ella the me dice, pues, vea, that you gave me. Ve a la oficina allá adelante. Voy a la oficina. Le Tells paso. me go to the office up front. I went there. Le doy esto al, al señor Loren. I give this paper to Mr. Loren. Donde Loren le pone ahí, abril primero. Loren puts on the paper que, April que yo 1st. Tengo, que me esa That's when that vehicle with that plate number was given to me. Vuelvo atrás otra vez a la oficina. Y le digo a la joven, mire. I go back to the office and tell the lady. Esa tablilla que me le pusieron a mi carro. That plate that was put well, on my vehicle. En abril primero, así que no me molesten más. Que yo no le debo sentar. So please don't bother me. Okay. Yo creo que le, le di un poquito de tiempo. I extended the time because I want people to understand that. Gracias. Problem, the problem that, 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 that the drivers are facing by everyone. So thank you. Thank you. I, I'm submitting the bill. A ver si cogimos aparte, pero. Los problemas de ustedes, nosotros vamos a tratar, tra le di un tiempito para que la gente escuchara eso. Pero gracias, gracias por, por, su, por su participación. Thank you for your, for okay. your participation. Okay, so, vamos a ver otro, gracias. Uh, good morning, my name is Sergio Cabrera. Um, the AAR program, the Accessor Ride program, has provided a lifeline to New Yorkers with special transportation requirements. Okay. As a wave driver and someone who engages with the passengers that require special transportation, the response has been overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive. Definitely an incredible pro program that needs to be sustained, improved, and expanded. 
not only have AAR partic participants, but also wheelchair-constrained New Yorkers have expressed the appreciation in finally having a service that can actually help them achieve transportation independence. It's not a perfect system, and may not ever be a perfect system, but it's definitely provided a service that was not available at all. How do we sustain this program? The TLC WAVE program depends on the number of trips, on the number of trips on a daily basis by yellow and green taxis. The 30 cent surcharge added to every taxi trip is the financial blood that makes this program possible. As we all know and have heard, yellow taxis have lost 50% of the trips that this particular transportation, public transportation segment was completing four years ago. The Green Taxi Program, or SHL, created to provide metered taxi service to the outer boroughs has dwindled from 9,000 to 2,500 cars. The, the AAR program, which has provided a small financial supplement to the yellow and green operators, um, but the popularity of the AAR program has strained the finances of the MTA. Um, public transportation in this segment has to be protected. This should be a priority. If the taxis are not around, you're not going to get a taxi at all. If this program goes down the hill, you're not going to get a taxi at all. How uh, the 800-pound gorilla in the room is the congestion pricing that's coming in January. Yellow taxis are going to be a thing of the past. The TLC wave program will be a thing of the past. The MTA a, uh, accessor ride program will need to go back to their past providers. The solutions are crystal clear. The solutions are crystal clear. Please, let's stop making new rules and get to work. Okay. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Good morning, Chairman Diaz and the members of the Four Hire Committee. My name is Jacob Policano. I'm here on behalf of David Beyer, who is the President of the Committee for Taxi Safety. We and taxi cab drivers industry-wide thank you for the opportunity to speak today on New York City's accessibility standards. We support the city's efforts to ensure equal service in the taxi and for hire sectors. However, we believe that the city's current policies, while appearing favorable on paper, have ultimately hurt taxi cab drivers financially and continue to halt progress as it pertains to accessibility. As medallion owners have become incapable of securing income, due to an abundance of drivers fleeing onerous accessibility requirements, many have resorted to selling their medallions for a loss. To date, there are approximately 1,000 medallions sitting on the shelves of larger financial institutions rather than being used to provide accessible rides today. While the 50% settlement was a laudable goal, it was not implemented in a manner that would allow it to succeed. Assessing yellow taxis based on the number of vehicles while assessing FHVs based on total trips has created a re regulatory environment that encourages drivers to migrate away from yellow cabs. In order to reach the 25% benchmark that the city has called for, only 7.5% of four hire vehicles need be accessible. In contrast, the taxi industry is once again forced into stricter requirements and asked to make 50% of its cars wheelchair accessible. This is a policy disaster that has devastated an already dying taxi industry, and the re results are blaringly obvious. More than two-thirds of the city's medallions made it mandated as accessible are either resting in storage or sitting idle as drivers opt for more loosely regulated for hire sector. This is a problem we have seen time and time again, and if I may draw an analogy to the Taxi of Tomorrow program, now seven years into the 10-year program, the Taxi of Tomorrow initiative has already been terminated. This is due to the fact that drivers realize they could easily avoid the Taxi of Tomorrow, a vehicle which many oppose because of its inefficiency, by simply switching over to any number of fuel-efficient vehicles offered in the for hire sector. While the city was overly fixated on pushing its gas-guzzling Nissan minivan, the yellow cab industry was struggling bitterly against an onslaught of unequal regulation. Drivers have proven over and over that they want what is best for the environment and what is most fuel efficient. In a similar fashion, drivers want to be accessible and want to offer be the best quality of labor for the most people possible. Simply mandating that a certain number of vehicles meet these accessibility standards and neglecting to consider whether or not these vehicles actually end up on the road is a mistake, one which has dire consequences for taxi drivers. The city needs to be diligent in addressing this problem and avoid the paper victory of a 50% settlement that will ultimately take thousands of cars off the road. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And if, any, if anyone in which chair are here to testify, I will take you first. Anybody in which chair? You, please come. Any, any, anyone in which chair, please come. I'm going to jump you. I'm going to take you first. Okay.
Okay. Officer. Martinez. Okay, they go now. Okay, I'm also gonna call uh Arlin Lin what's that? Linares. Linares? R Linares. Oh just for a second. Hector Guzmán. Hector Guzmán. Hector Germán. Farid Malak. ¿Cuánto van? Robert Acevedo. Robert Acevedo. I'm Robert Acevedo. You ro okay, good. And Justin Wong. Justin Wong. Okay. Mr. Acevedo. Yeah. We're starting with you. Yes. Um, I, I am Robert Acevedo from uh, Disabled in Action. Uh, um, for higher access, uh, it's important to my independence as a wheelchair user. I'm also with uh, the independent care system, and they've helped uh, with my independence also. Um, it is frustrating that I'm forced to use a walker instead of my wheelchair in order to use uh, FHVs like uh, Uber. Um, a personal experience with this issue took place this summer when I went uh, to a forum in Westchester. To use Uber, I needed to use a walker which uh, can now fold uh, to fit in a standard size uh, vehicle. Uh, and now, I'm aware that Uber has a wave option, but usually this option is the more expensive one. Um, why can't I use the more inexpensive option, the pool, pool, like, like other able-bodied people use? Um, I see that taxis use their own Uber-style app called the Wave app, W-A-A-V-E. I tried using that app with no success. I have found no driver of an accessible vehicle. Very disappointed. I do, however, like the, uh, the fact that the price of an accessible vehicle and a non-accessible vehicle is the same. That's nice. The curb app. Uh, with, with uh, uh, via via the DMTA, um, which I, it's a great system, but I can't use it. I'm on the waiting list, um, so it needs to be extended. Um, I don't know if they're going to do that. Um, all this and all this is in Manhattan. Accessible taxis are even more limited in other boroughs. So we, we need a spontaneous, accessible a ride we can count on. Oh, and also, by the way, um, you were talking about uh, uh, when we had to uh, wake up in the morning to get ready to come here. Well, I, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning just to come to this meeting, and I live in Manhattan. Wow. Mm, okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Will you please convey that to the commissioner? Next one. <laughs> Buenos días. Mi nombre es Héctor Germán. En el mundo choferil me conocen como One to Two. Good morning. My name is Héctor Germán. In the industry known as One to Two. Primeramente nosotros queremos darle las gracias a Dios. First, I want to say thank Personalmente, en nombre mío y de nuestra familia y de nuestra comunidad taxista, queremos darle las gracias a Reverendo Rubén Díaz, a todo ese equipo de trabajo, incluyendo a nuestra hermana Jenny Mejía, por ese apoyo incondicional para nuestra liberación. For that support en lo que ya todos conocemos. Quiero aprovechar eh, este magnífico tiempo que la vida Dios nos ha puesto en este día. Hemos escuchado cómo ese tema tan importante sobre la discapacitación se ha desglosado en el día de hoy. We have, we have heard about the, el tema de discapacitación. About the, about the Handicap, donde hemos escuchado que tiene mucho que hacer para que se establezca una igualdad de servicio. To establish an equality of service. Pero también hemos escuchado a un comité But also we have heard a committee y a los concejales and the council estar dispuesto a hacer todo lo que esté para que los discapacitados de esta ciudad tengan igualdad en la transportación. Pero también la comunidad taxista tiene otro tema muy, pero muy importante y que en este momento hay que ponerle mucha, pero mucha atención. Y es el tema del suicidio de nosotros los taxistas. Suicidio inducido. Suicide in totalmente Dubai. diferente a suicidio deliberado. Totally different from suicide that are deliberate. Eso significa que cuando el suicidio es inducido, that hay un culpable. When the suicide is induced, there is a someone that's siete compañeros que han tomado el camino de suicidarse. Seven drivers that have taken the path to commit suicide. Y que hoy nosotros queremos pedirle primeramente al alcalde Bill de Blasio. And today we ask our mayor Bill de Blasio. Al presidente Scotty Johnson, al presidente del consejo municipal. Corby Johnson. A todos los concejales. All the council members. Al nuevo comité. The new committee. Prestigiosamente encabezado por el reverendo Rubén Díaz. Chaired by our reverend Rubén Díaz que nosotros, la comunidad taxista, exige We, the of our taxi driver, la destitución inmediata de la man, comisionada actual, señora Mira Hochi, porque en los últimos tiempos in the last nos time, hemos dado cuenta que muchas actividades ellos la han hecho Many of the activities they have totalmente a espalda del Consejo Municipal. Dando como resultado result, una clase choferil, tomando el camino del suicidio, compañeros enfermos, mucha deuda y mucha familia desintegrada. Para terminar, quiero, queremos pedirle en nombre de la comunidad taxista conclude, a todos los concejales members, que apoyen incondicionalmente la gestión de ese nuevo comité encabezado por nuestro reverendo Rubén Díaz y apadrinado por nuestra hermana Jenny Mejía y todos los compañeros porque la comunidad taxista en ese nuevo comité para terminar sentimos un pie de amigo el cual no teníamos en años anteriores muchas gracias en nombre de la comunidad taxista Buena, buenos días, Good morning. concejal. Council buenos días, Jenny. Jenny. Buen día. Muchísimas Buen día. gracias por el apoyo que ha venido dando. Mi nombre es Radames Linares. Thank you for the support you have given us. My name is Radames Linares. Pertenezco a la Unión de Taxistas de la Ciudad de Nueva York, UTANI. I pertain to the Union of Taxis of New York. 
Eh, vengo para decirle que eh, nos sentimos preocupados por, por la última situación, lo, las persecuciones, los, la, los atropellos y la cantidad de multas que a diario, en esta semana daily, principalmente, week, y parece que fue después que el compañero se suicidó en, en like el tren, que la TLC arremetió, ha arremetido en contra de nosotros abusivamente, hasta por pararse una pompa y usted tener todo en, en regla, la TLC le pone un ticket a usted. Apart, y yo creo que esa comisión debe de parar de una vez por todas and esa situación. That that Porque nos vamos a seguir suicidando más compañeros tacitas. Porque parece que nosotros los taxistas somos delincuentes o salimos a vender drogas. Drugs, que la TLC sale a perseguirnos donde quiera que estemos. Por otro lado, hand, con respecto a Uber, in to Uber eh, yo creo que a Uber se le debe poner, parar de poner un alto. I think Uber should put a stop. Porque muchas veces eh, Uber Because sabiendo que no, Uber que no Uber, tiene vehículo, they don't have vehicles. tiene un sistema que la, eh, la comisión they debe de reunirse con ellos. Yo duré el domingo cinco horas en el Kennedy. On Sunday, I was five hours at Kennedy Airport. Entré a las la la siete y diez de la mañana. I entered at seven, ten in the morning. Y a las doce y media me tiran una llamada para recoger un pasajero que no era de esos que viajan en avión, sino como un empleado de la aeropuerta. Voy a buscar el pasajero. When I went to pick up the passenger, no aparece. Passenger never showed up. Y Uber me dice que cancele. And Uber tells me to cancel. Cancelo y vuelvo otra vez al parqueo porque no cancel, quiero salir vacío. Cuando vengo, me pone la misma cantidad que yo tenía cuando comencé, que me faltaba de uno a diez pasajeros, de diez carros. Y lo llamo y le digo que si yo voy a comenzar de nuevo con and cinco horas, y me dicen que ellos le cobraron la cancelación and de tres y pico de dólares. Y yo le dije, pero usted me paga mi tiempo de cinco horas perdido aquí. Porque me dicen que van a tomar eso en cuenta. Siempre hay una defensa para ellos, pero siempre en contra de nosotros los choferes que trabajamos para ellos. Bueno, pasen buenas tardes. Gracias, gracias. Eso es lo que, ese es el problemita que tenemos, pero estamos bregando con eso. Gracias. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Council. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to testify today in front of you. Um, my name is Tarek Malah. I'm the Global Head of Channel Development for Curb Mobility. I'm here representing on behalf of Jason Gross, our uh, VP of Mobility. He's unfortunately out of the country and was not aware of the hearing beforehand. <clears throat> Over the past several years, CURB has evolved from merely a, prov a provider of TPEP and LPEP systems to a true mobility platform, making transportation more efficient, cost-effective, and inclusive to all New, New Yorkers. More than simply matching passengers and drivers through technology, CURB is providing an ever-expanding array of tools to riders, regulators, agencies, and drivers to improve the transportation outcome for all stakeholders especially with respect to accessibility. Curb has focused on improving the service options for e-hail trips via three primary channels of passenger demand, through which we collectively power, uh, empower more than 12,000 wheelchair accessible trips per month. At the fall of 2016, Curb launched a wave availability in our consumer-facing app, and we have, uh, we have since enhanced our app allowing users to set WAVE as a default accessible preference. We currently complete approximately 1,000 WAVE trips per month through the app. 
Um, when TLC selected a new vendor for the accessibility, of, I'm sorry, the accessible dispatch program, CURP led an initiative to leverage its existing TPEP system um, and, and its open APIs to obviate the need for a second dispatch terminal in the wheelchair accessible vehicle, cutting down on both incremental expense and potential distraction for the drivers monitoring monitoring dual, um, um, drivers monitoring dual system in their vehicles. We have supported the program by conducting outreach and training for the drivers and we fulfill an additional 5,000 wave trips per month for passengers through this program. Uh, perhaps our product, of, uh, our proudest achievement in this area is one we have been able to bring to the full power of our platform to bear, uh, to bear the MTA Accessoride program. For the past two years, uh, for the past two years plus, CURB has been working to close partnership with the New York City Transportation, uh, New York City Transit and the MTA to leverage more than 10,000 yellow and green taxis connected to the CURB platform to improve mobility option for, access for Accessoride customers. To service this program, CURB utilizes a full stack of technology, including a sophisticated algorithms, web-based dispatching and trip monitoring systems, APIs, and the CURB smart app platform. Um, but on top of all of this, CURB utilizes its 24-7 call center to manage and monitor all trips and to provide better communication options to those who without smartphone or technology or technology okay. savvy. Um, under this program, we have provided well over 1 million trips to paratransit customers to date through advanced reservations and on-demand booking. We currently service close to 200,000 trips per month, one more sentence, and especially with respect to the wheelchair users, we service up to 6,000 or more monthly trips. Uh, we look forward to continued support efforts improving the accessibility across the taxi and for higher vehicle space. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Good afternoon. Just turned afternoon. My name is Justin Wood. I am the Director of Research and Organizing at New York Lawyers for the Public Interest and a member of the Accessoride Reform uh, Group. Thank you, Chair, for holding this really important hearing today and the chance to testify. Um, I don't want to read all of my testimony, but I just want to emphasize a few points uh, that we've looked at that I think others, others have uh, touched on this morning. First of all, as we've heard from the TLC, there's an enormous disparity where the four hire vehicle, huge fleet, has virtually zero accessible vehicles. And that's really not a surprise to people, New Yorkers with disabilities. Um, we actually tested the apps advertised by Uber and Lyft um, just a few months ago that Mr. Acevedo referenced, and we found that 70% of times, seven times out of 10, an Uber or Lyft hail for a WAV would produce no response, no vehicle re would respond. Uh, we also found that the waiting times in the few times that they did respond were three or four times higher than for inaccessible vehicles. So there's a gross uh, disparity there and refusal to serve New Yorkers with disabilities by these very profitable and large corporations. Um, another point that's been made, but this is, this is part of what's holding back the Accessoride On Demand program is the lack of wheelchair accessible vehicles, particularly in the outer boroughs. Uh, places like the Bronx, your borough, have the highest percentage of New Yorkers with disabilities living in, in the Bronx, and yet that's where we have the fewest w WAVs. <laughs> Would you please repeat that again? Absolutely. W the Bronx has the highest percentage of residents of that borough who, who live with disabilities, but the lowest number of wheelchair accessible taxis, and, and there's uh, a very, most of those are still in Manhattan. So we need to find ways working with the council uh, to make sure that the WAVs are increasing, particularly in the outer boroughs. Thank you. Yes. See, see uh, Commissioner Travis, I really, I do really appreciate you staying here. Today. Absolutely. Just one other okay. brief thing. We haven't been talking about the subway here. But that's at the root of a lot of the issues is the inaccessibility of the subway system. We only have one in four stations have elevators and those are often out of service. 
So we also really want to work with the council to make sure that the for hire vehicle industry is doing its fair share to fund the MTA and the accessibility we so desperately need uh, in the subway and bus system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, Commissioner, again, um, I, I really appreciate you staying here today because you could see that when we get frustrated, we have reason to. We have reason to get frustrated. Now, I, I guess, a new information, the Bronx is the highest on handicap accessible. What was, what was that again? Most people, most New Yorkers with disabilities live in the outer boroughs, just as most New Yorkers live in the outer boroughs. Uh, but I, I believe the percentage is highest in the Bronx. And this is, of course, the issue the is taxis are still heavily concentrated in Manhattan. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, thank you. We're going to end this, uh, me, this hearing with three more. This is the last three. I appreciate the commission staying for the whole uh, hearing today. And uh, you, know, you and I, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna have a good relationship. Okay? You seem to understand our frustration, seem to understand our need. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bridget Felix. Scott Rotter and Deborah Elio. Deborah. Okay. These three are the last three, and we finish. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, um, Councilman Jenny. Good morning. Um, I have um, a statement or a testimony. I still have not received my car. I still have not received from the car leasing that they took my car. Um, well, well, on, what are you talking about? OK, they, they ways back, um, I got hit by an SUV. Um, I had this statement in the last um, uh, he hearing. Um, I still haven't received my car. I haven't received Will a listing. What was the problem? I'm sorry? Will you tell the problem so the commissioner could understand what, what are we going through? Hello. Thank you for staying. <laughs> um, tower, auto leasing. Um, they've taken my car because I wasn't able to pay because I got hit, my body got hit by an SUV, so I wasn't able to work. They've taken my car, I haven't gotten my car back, I haven't gotten any options to get my car back, and on top of that, I cannot get a listing of what is owed, um, anything on uh, Easy Pass, on tickets, um, nothing, and it just keeps growing and growing, and I don't have any answers. Um, no answers, no emails back, no telephone calls. Um, I'd like to know how can I get answers on the amounts that needs to get paid? How do I get my car back? I am, I'm, I'm, I'm in a contract. Um, if, if they say that they can give me another car with the year of the car and also um, maybe a roundabout um, mileage that they took the car with that would be that would be great but I also need to know what is the end result I know that I've paid about 30,000 about 30,000 um, but I really don't know at the end of it all is it going to be 57 or is it going to be like my other um, uh, co-workers that it ends up $80,000 I would like to know um, I don't want any other surprises I also have um, uh, a statement um, <laughs> on behalf of the organizations New York Independent Taxi Driver and Taxi Driver Defense Group, we are asking the city councilman for the TLC commissioner's dismissal.
dismissal, did you hear that? Dismissal. Um, for violating the United States Constitution, nor the governor, um, nor the mayor, um, or some of the city council members, um, with the exception, of course, the president of transportation and councilman Ruben Diaz, um, can continue to allow the violation, hmm, the violation of the Constitution of the United States in the name of our seven brothers that have committed suicide, a dismissal is in order. Thank you for listening. And I would like to translate. Can I do that, please? Thank you. Um, en nombre de las organizaciones, eh, New York Independent Taxi Driver E, Taxi Driver Defense Group, quiero pedirle al concilio la destitución de la comisionada de de la TLC por estar violando la Constitución de los Estados Unidos, porque ni el alcalde, ni el gobernador, ni algunos de los concejales pueden permitir la violación a la Constitución por esos siete suicidios de los compañeros fallecidos. Hay que destituirla. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Yeah. Is it on? Good morning, everybody. This is my first time here. Thank you, Ms. Jenny. Um, my name is Mrs. Deborah Elliott Blubman. I'm really a, like a self-advocate for myself and my other seniors who are disabled. Um, many did not come here today or come on a regular basis because they have no faith in the system that when they make a complaint that they will not be retaliated upon. I'm here complaining about the e-health services. Unfortunately, I've been receiving e-health for about over a year now, and most of the drivers are rude. They are lazy. Um, I'm gonna give you a recent example. Last night, they picked me up from church. My church is Times Square Church. It's located 237 West 51st Street between 8th and Broadway. They have a accessorized staff that works there. That means they volunteer their time. It was two vans parked in front of the church. My driver, if I, if I did not go between these two vans, accessorized vans, I would not have been picked up last night. Instead of he bringing the car closer to the curb or getting out of the car and letting the staff know that I'm looking for Mrs. Bloodman because they will go look for us. And he did not even do that. So if I didn't get off the sidewalk, walk between two accessorized vans and go looking for my cab driver, I would have not been taken home last night. And normally we have to run them down from where they pass the church from to 8th Avenue. Staff literally runs them down, beg them to come back and pick me up. They don't even stop to pick me up. They automatically put no show. My other concern is when we do get a cab driver that stops and pick us up at the right address, they ride around the city, get off the highway, ride through the streets, get back on the highway, ride through the streets, and do this about two or three times so the meter could be nice and large for whatever they salary be, which is very sad for me because I'm disabled and very painful sitting a long time. The other concern is last night I noticed is the second time I had a flat rate. The meter was already started went before I even got in the cab. So when I got in there, I look, you know, I usually greet my driver, you know, how you're doing and so forth. And I look at the meter and it was already 1887. I had the receipt for you, Jenny. And I'm shocked. I'm going, why is the meter already set? He said, my boss do does it. He says it's a flat rate. I don't know if you're aware of that because a lot of my um, colleagues are concerned about that as well. Uh -huh. I sympathize with your program. That's, that program is run by TLC. So. They listening, right? They listening. Okay. I mean, I, I hope so. The commissioner, the commissioner Tav is here today. But that's a program, that's, that's a program from the, run by the TLC. So Department of Travel. That, that's their. Well, they that's, listening. Okay, let's that's what they are doing. doing. Yeah, because it's not only me that's experienced, it's, it's my other senior colleagues that's disabled as well. And again, it's very painful when you're riding us around the city and we have to get to our destination at time and we're already in pain. We just want to get to our destination at a proper time so we could be nice and refreshed. So, that that so is my main is, concern. It is, it is very interesting to hear you complaining about a program and drivers under the supervision of TLC. Meanwhile, TLC is chasing drivers that are not below the TLC, instead of being fixing their, their own house before taking care of all the business. Yeah. 
So I, I suggest the TLC to look onto those drivers and those programs that are run by TLC and easy up with the, dri the, the, the drivers in the Bronx and in other parts of the world. Thank you. Thank you for last, Thank you. last one. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. My name is Scott Rudder. I'm the vice president of the Limo Association of New York. Uh, we represent operators within l the luxury limousine base classification uh, here in New York City and very much appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Let me begin by saying that we fully support finding ways of increasing wave service to those who need and depend on this service. However, we're very concerned over the fact that all oversight initiatives regarding this very important topic do, uh, do not address the significant operational differences that exist between the various different base license segments here in the city, in the, within the FHV industry here in the city. Unlike black car and livery bases and TNCs, the high majority of luxury limousine bases do not provide on-demand service. The large majority of our business is, pre, is all prearranged, usually hours and or days ahead of time, not immediately as in the case of the majority of street hail app-based companies that we hear about in the news today. Additionally, most of our luxury limousine bases provide prearranged services to established customer accounts through established relationships uh, also with other limousine companies within the city. Another significant difference in the luxury limousine segment is that the high majority of our prearranged trip re reservations are packaged before and throughout the day that ensures chauffeurs' days are full and productive without cruising streets looking for street hails and or accepting or responding to electronic street hails. When our chauffeurs are finished with the work that they've been assigned for the day, they return to our bases, they park the car. So we are not contributing to the congestion issue either by driving around looking for work. So I'm here today to request that the different base designations are taken into consideration as the committee considers oversight and regulation regarding wave service. There are no one-size-fits-all solutions here, and by placing on-demand requirements on operators who don't provide on-demand service does not advance WAVE initiatives. Conversely, such requirements would have a devastating cost impact without having any impact issue on the accessibility issue itself. Uh, the objective of increasing the availability of wave rolling stock, which is often articulated uh, by the, uh, rightly so, by the various advocacy groups, will not increase availability at all with operators who don't provide on-demand service. So we ask that the committee give serious attention to these issues, and we're happy to provide any further information uh, that we could provide to help uh, answer some of these questions. Sir, I would like you to get in contact with my Great. counsel, Christopher Lin, okay? Fantastic, thank you. Jenny, would you please translate what, translate what I'm going to say? <clears throat> Damas y caballeros, este, en esta reunión de hoy, this meeting today, nosotros nos sentimos muy, muy orgullosos, we are very pleased, muy privilegiados, very privileged, de que la asistente acomisionada, that the assistant to the commissioner, la comisionada Travis, la commissioner Bladis, ha, ha estado con nosotros y se ha quedado todo el tiempo. Has stood here with us all this time. Eso enseña that shows respeto, respect, enseña eh, su uh, humanismo, humanidad. It also shows humanitism por la gente que padece towards the people that hemos tenido have un grupo de bastante nutrido de personas en silla de rueda we have a numerous amount of people in with disabilities in wheelchair y ella ha dado respeto también a los taxistas que han estado aquí and she has aquí. also presented respect to the FHC yo, yo yo reconozco i recognize y obedezco las leyes and i have also que en este plantel that in this no se place puede aplaudir. we cannot applaud, pero con todo respeto, but with all respect, 
Perdóname que rompa las leyes. Excuse me for breaking the rules. Y yo quiero que antes de irnos, And I want before le dé un aplauso a la comisionada. To applaud the commissioner. Por haberse quedado. Con eso te concluimos. We conclude. En este lugar. Y díganle a la comisionada. Please tell the commissioner. Que si los, si los, en, las personas en silla de ruedas pueden llegar a un hearing. If the people on wheelchair can come to this meeting. No hay ninguna razón. There's no reason. Para que nosotros tam, tam, for no podamos us llegar. Either to come here. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Este meeting ha sido. This meeting has been concluded.